So you wanna start creating video content that helps you build your brand and grow your business. But you got a couple of questions like, what equipment do you need and don't need? What type of video content should you be creating? And which one should you maybe not be creating? And you definitely don't wanna make a bunch of videos just to have it be a giant waste of time. So how do you make sure that this becomes a positive ROI activity for your business? If you've been wondering any of those things, then this video's perfect for you. So first up, what equipment do you need to create high quality, brand building, client attracting video content? Good news for everyone watching this, all you really need is a smartphone to get started. I got the iPhone 15 right here, but before this I had the iPhone 13 and that worked perfectly fine. You're gonna create long form videos, YouTube videos, things like that. You're probably gonna have it 16 by nine horizontally. You're gonna create vertical videos, think LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts you're probably gonna to wanna to record vertically. Now, the cool thing is if you go horizontally, you can film in 4K in a lot of these new smartphones, and then you can repurpose down from 16 by nine horizontally down to vertical. Once you go vertical, you're not gonna be able to really go horizontal. So keep that in mind as you're filming videos. So most of these smartphones give you everything that you need from a visual standpoint. You really don't need to upgrade anything crazy beyond that. But if you did wanna upgrade, you'd be looking at a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. What I'm using right now is the Sony ZV-1. That's actually what you're seeing right now on video and I'm filming in 4K. And then in editing, we break down that 4K footage into regular HD footage because otherwise that file becomes massive. Now you may be wondering right now, well, if your smartphone's just as good as the camera, why don't you just use your smartphone? The main reason that I'm using my camera still is because it has an audio jack that plugs right into my mic, my Rode mic here, which I'm gonna talk about mics and audio here in a second. And I did find an adapter where I can plug that same mic into my phone, but because there's an adapter and it's not plugging into an audio jack, you lose a lot of the sound quality. So really the only reason I'm doing this on my camera now is until I can figure out a better way to get that sound quality improved on my smartphone. Now, of course, I could use a wireless mic that would plug right into my phone, but for me, the stationary mics are much better for long form content. I think they're better are quality and they're much more consistent in terms of volume levels where the wireless tends to kind of go up and down. Now for virtual calls or interviews, I do use my Logitech Pro, which is just a simple webcam that you can attach to the top of your computer. And that allows me to stream in footage. So if I'm doing an interview on a podcast or I'm on a Zoom call or a Google Meet Meet, Google Meet Meet, Google Meet Meet, <laughs> some of the stuff I say, I don't even know. We should keep that in there. That should be part of Meet Meet. <laughs> I think I'm just figured out a new commercial for Google. Meet Meet. It's like the Roadrunner. Meet Meet. All right. Anyways, so let's say somebody invited me on their podcast and I'm going to be interviewed as a guest. Then I would have my webcam filming and streaming that footage. And then I would probably use either my camera or my smartphone to capture the footage with maybe a wireless mic or one of these mics so I can get my own footage there, repurpose it into short form video content. So let's move on to audio. So I mentioned this Rode mic here before. So Rode makes great stationary mics along with wireless mics and so does Sure, I've got that Sure mic and this one is just a USB, but those are my go-to stationary mics. If I'm doing long form video, I'm typically always using this Rode or the Shure. Sure, sure, whatever. Now the wireless mics are a whole different thing. What I love about them is you can take them on the go. They're easy to set up. You can record while you're outside, you're traveling, you're in a plane, you're at a conference. You don't have to be right in front of it. You've got some range. The ones that I use for the most part are the Comica and then the Movo. Now what I love about this is not only can you use it for a camera, but you can use it for what I use it most of the time for, which is it plugs right into your smartphone. You just gotta make sure you get the right adapter. So when you're buying it, make sure if you need USB-C or if you need the lightning adapter or whatever your phone has, whatever that port is at the bottom, make sure that the plug-in for that Movo wireless mic or that Comica mic or that Rode mic, whatever you get, make sure that it plugs right in there. And it's so easy to do because literally you just plug it in and then you talk into the mic, you clip on the mic on your side, the wire runs up your shirt, it's like right here, and then your phone can be 10, 20, probably 50 yards away, and you're still gonna pick up audio. There's no special apps that you need, you just plug it right in, go to your camera, hit video, boom, you're in business. I think if you're gonna get only one mic, I would probably invest in that first, just because of the range and the mobility that you have with that. And if you wanted to, again, you could make long form videos with those mics too, because they are really good quality. And don't worry, I've put the names and links to get all of these in the description below. You're welcome. Moving on to lighting. Lighting is very, very, very important. Now, if you're outside filming, videos, you can leverage natural light. But a lot of times for the long form videos, you're going to be inside. So you want to make sure that you can control your lighting in the room that you're in. And really what you need to do that is you need three core lights. You want one ring light that's more direct light coming at you. And then you typically want two side lights on the side of you. If they're side lights, where else would they be? But on the side of you. Mm. So the side lights I have are newer. And I don't mean like 
newer, like I just bought them. I mean, literally the brand's called newer. That's a distinction I need to make. And then the ring light I'm using is the Loom Cube. Now you can get cheaper lights than this. You can get way more expensive lights than this, but I will say that you want lights that you can adapt and adjust the lighting strength and then also the tone of the light. So if I want it to be a little bit more on the white side, a little bit more on the yellow side, if I want to turn down one of the lights over here and maybe turn up one over here, I want the flexibility to be able to do that. That's really important because some of the cheaper lights, you turn it on and you turn it off and that's all you got. Now, everything else in terms of equipment, I would label as support equipment. And that ranges from things that you absolutely do need, like a tripod. I have a very simple tripod that I use for outdoor filming and vertical videos. And then I have a little nicer one that I use for the long form videos. And it's nice if there's a port for a camera and then also a port for a phone at the same time, in case you want to film from two different devices at the same time. And there's also mini tripods, like the one that this Rode mic is sitting on, where if you didn't have that, it would be kind of awkward. It would just be sitting there, like not level. So you want to make sure that with any mic you get, some of them come with the tripod, some of them don't. So just make sure you do your research. Everything else in this equipment list is pretty much accessories or add-ons. You don't have to have them, but they do make your background and backdrop look a little cooler. So whether it's something like this, or maybe you've got writing and letters on here, you've got some greenery here, you've got some green accent lights, you got this light bulb here, you know, some shrubbery here, <laughs> shrubbery, you know, some trees and stuff like that over here. Like whatever you want to add is completely fine. This right here is just a black backdrop that I got off Amazon. You put some sticky adhesive on the back of it, stuff that's not going to tear up your walls. And then you just put it on the walls and it comes in squares and you just kind of plant it on there. So again, these aren't things that you have to have, but they do make your background look a little bit nicer and a little bit more visually appealing for the people watching your videos. Here's my philosophy about all this equipment. Start with the most important things and then you can always upgrade later. Don't get hung up in this. Oh, I got to have the perfect setup. I'm waiting two months for this to come in because I ordered it. I got a special backdrop. It's custom made and I'll, I'll start making videos then. No, just start now. Get your basics, your camera, your audio, your lighting, your stands, and start creating content. You can always upgrade later. Now I have to mention this too. So once you start recording the video, you're going to want to make sure that you've got a good content workflow process and system. And you're going to want to try to sprinkle some automation in there too. That's a whole separate video. And it's actually a video that I did right here that you definitely want to go check out. Because if you're going to start creating a lot of content, one thing that will hold you back is if you don't have a good system and process. It's too much to cover on this one video. That's why I did a whole video about it. So maybe after this, go check it out. Okay, so let's move on to number two. We've just covered all the equipment that you need. Now you wanna know what type of content should you be creating to build your brand and grow your business? And here's a real wild idea. How about videos that your customers would actually wanna watch? But seriously, let's break this down because there is a lot of gray area here. Without going too deep into an actual content strategy, you want to identify what is your pillar content, meaning what are the things that you're going to talk about over and over and over again that are going to help you build a brand, that are going to help you build authority in your space, that are going to allow you to make a deep impact on people that are coming to watch your videos. If you don't do that, you're going to end up making a bunch of random videos and it's honestly really hard to get traction that way. And you're probably not going to win business that way unless your goal is to become an influencer or potentially just to sell your attention. I'm I'm assuming that's not you. So at a high level, just think about what are some of those pillars? For me, I might be talking about how to convert video content into clients, how to use LinkedIn to grow your business, edutainment content, right? These are different pillars that I can talk about a lot of different topics within those pillars, but they keep me grounded into most days I'm going to be talking about this. I don't want to put you in a box. I'm not saying you can never go outside of that, but that should be the foundation of your content moving forward. Another thing that most companies don't understand about creating content is there's really two buckets of content. There's the why content which you're explaining why something matters to your audience or customers. You're shifting perspective. You're sharing a point of view that makes them maybe think about their problem and how they can solve it a little bit differently. And then there's the how content, which is basically showing people, your audience, your customers, how to actually do it, how to improve results, how to solve the problem. So once you got your content pillars down, you understand the why content and the how content, then you're going to leverage frameworks, strategies, storytelling, personal journey stories, customer success stories, edutainment, and a lot of other different methods to actually deliver that message creatively to your audience. So you're driving a similar message home, similar point of view home from a consistency standpoint, but you're switching up your delivery so that you keep it fun, exciting, and sexy. And for most B2B companies right now, you definitely want to be leveraging LinkedIn and YouTube. Those would be the two platforms that I would spend the next 12 months, getting really good at building skills around and growing those channels. And as you're doing that, of course, create content off social media, get the newsletter going. If you want to build out the content library on your website, get the blog posts going, don't limit yourself. But I'm saying if you're going to pick a channel or two, LinkedIn and YouTube, 100%. And moving on to number three, how do you make sure that you maximize your efforts and that creating videos doesn't just become a giant waste of time? Ideally, we'd like to get an ROI out of this, right? We'd like to get something out of this and not just look back after a hundred videos and be 
be like, yep, it did absolutely nothing. So a few things here. One, you wanna maximize every video that you create. So I'm creating this video right now, right? This is gonna be a YouTube video. It's gonna go on our content library. I'm gonna transcribe this video. I'm gonna use some AI, ChatGPT, and I'm gonna turn it into a nice blog post, a newsletter, potentially some LinkedIn posts. We'll chop up this long form into short form video clips that will go on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, LinkedIn, potentially Instagram Reels. So if we can take one video and we can squeeze it for everything it's got, well, now we're maximizing our efforts. Now we're reaching 10 times more people than we originally would have by just creating that one video. So look for efficiencies in the process. Look for how can I take one and make it many? Because if I made 10 videos like this, that's potentially 100 plus pieces of content, could even be 200, where an amateur is just gonna create 10 videos and that's all you got. Now you do need to give this time to work. So don't get five to 10 videos in and, and not see amazing results and oh my gosh, we haven't won a ton of customers and then decide to quit. You need to be patient with the results. But here's what I'll tell you. The first two to three months, what you should be looking at to know that you're getting the most out of your videos is qualitative feedback. What are people saying about the content that you're posting and that you're sharing with prospects and customers? When I got serious about YouTube, I got serious about TikTok and LinkedIn and putting out video. Before any real quantitative results started to pour in, I would see comments and get DMs and emails where people would say, this was really valuable. This helped me actually piece together the missing component in my content strategy. Hey, thanks for making this. I'm going to go share this with my CEO. Hey, this was really impactful. We use this to actually come up with our plan for the next year. This is the kind of feedback you're looking for. And if you're not getting that feedback, again, you can go share your content with potential customers, right? You can share a link. You can share a video. You can share a YouTube URL. Get open and honest feedback because those are the insights that you need to know if you are just wasting time and you're not getting better or if the content really is impactful, it just needs more time to get out there. It's really important during this process that you focus on building skills, getting better, creating more efficiencies, and improving with every single piece of content that you make. Don't just focus on the results. Focus on who you're becoming, what skills you're building. Guess what? Video's not going away. Content's not going away. Social media's not going away. We consume double the amount of video content than we did just four years ago. So this is the present and this is the future. It's worth it alone. It's not a waste of time if you're building skills. That's almost worth it in itself, let alone the results and the clients you can win and the revenue you can generate once you get going. And finally now, drum roll please, we get to do Q&A. First question, should I be using 4K or regular HD when I'm filming my videos? I would suggest filming in 4K and then when you bring it into editing, you can transfer back to HD. That's gonna give you the highest quality of video, but the file size isn't gonna be ginormous to where it's hard to upload and download and get to different places. Even on my iPhone now, I film in 4K and then I bring it back to HD once it gets in editing. Second question, how do I choose between short form video and long form video? It's definitely easier to start with short form video because you can just pull out your phone, wireless mic, boom, you can go, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, boom, you're done. But I think as you get going, a foundation built around long form is much more smart. Because what you can do from a repurposing standpoint is you can record one long form video every two weeks and you can almost get an unlimited amount of content from that. Kind of like I talked about earlier, the micro clips, the long form videos, the content library, the newsletters, the blogs, the text, the picture, the graphics. It just feeds your content system and allows you to create a content machine. Harder to do that with only short form. So start where you got to start, but I'd say once you get in, start building a foundation around long form. Plus, YouTube is still highly underrated for most niches. Last question, how do I not let the idea of my videos being perfect get in the way of progress. This is just an ego thing. And you have to accept that if you're gonna be making videos, a lot of them are going to have things wrong with them. And there's just nothing you can really do about it, but just learn and try to get better from the next one. I've made a ton of bad videos. The sound's off, the color grading's off, the visual was off, it was blurry in some stances. I had the mic too close to the camera and the camera zoned in on the mic instead of me, so I was blurry. I have made an endless amount of mistakes on video. But that is why I sit here here today with the knowledge I have and the skill set I have. And I'm still going to put out videos that there's things wrong with pretty much every video I post. You got to focus on progress. You got to be able to look back, hey, 12 months ago, are my videos better now than they were 12 months ago, two years ago, three years ago? And you cannot let perfection get in the way of progress. And I would compare it to real life. When you're having a real life conversation with somebody, you don't grade yourself so harshly. You're not like, oh, I shouldn't have said um. It's like no conversation is going to go perfect. And I wanna thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already and definitely go check out that video on content workflow and process. It's a game changer.